Hello everyone, I'm Philip James and welcome. Today's interview is with Dr. Antonio Bianco. Dr. Bianco, welcome. Thank you very much, it's a pleasure to be here. Well, it's great to have you back. Uh, last time uh, we did an interview, it was for the Dr. Thyroid podcast and I must tell you, it's one of the most popular podcasts of the 100 on the Dr. Thyroid show. Uh, it's been downloaded hundreds, thousands of times, literally from all around the world. And it's in such an interesting topic. But before we dive into today's interview, you know, that was almost three years ago. How have you been? What's the latest in your life? Well, everything is fine. I mean, obviously, we have to adjust to COVID and keep working with uh, while uh, there's a pandemic going on. Uh, my work is focused mostly on the lab. So I'm very fortunate that I have a, a group that continued working as much as they could. There were restrictions, but, you know, things were okay. We were able to produce a bunch of stuff. Hmm. So uh, the, the, the latest is, and, and maybe for those who haven't heard your podcast before, if you could share a little bit about your background and experience, it will be listed in the description, but if you could give us a little more information about your background. Sure. I, I grew up in Brazil. I, I got my medical a degree and a PhD and research in clinical training in Brazil. And about 25 years ago, I, I moved to the US. Uh, I worked for about 10 years at the Harvard Medical School at the Brigham and Women's Hospital. Uh, then became chief of endocrinology at the University of Miami. And then I moved to Chicago. And uh, mm -hmm. right now I'm a professor of medicine at the University of Chicago, where I have my laboratory. Well, the topic today is latest innovations and treatments 2021 for hypothyroidism and related to t3 also what can you tell us about this well i mean i think that uh, in the last maybe few years what has happened is that there's a, a greater acceptance by the academic medical community on that t3 plays a role in the treatment of hypothyroidism it might not play a role for 100% of the patients. However, it does play a role for a substantial number of patients. About, you know, it's hard to put a finger on what that number is. I don't think that actually really matters much. It's somewhere between 15, 20, 25%. Uh, we are just not sure. And as you see statements from the American Thyroid Association, the British Thyroid Association, the European Thyroid Association, they all agree that number one, uh, there is a population of individuals of, with hypothyroidism that do not benefit fully from treatment with only levothyroxine. So that's a, that's a major milestone. Right? We mm. changed our view from uh, years ago where we would say, you know what, treatment of hypothyroidism is with levothyroxine, and that's it. No, now all these leaders in the field agree that there's a a population of hypothyroid patients yeah. out there that they just don't feel well on only levothyroxine. Mm, now, that's a, yeah. wow. I think that's a major change. And unfortunately, that population is large. Mm. And uh, some of them respond to adding T3 to the treatment. And some of them don't. And uh, we might go on and discuss why that is. But uh, it's all, the, all of these societies, they say now they recognize that, yeah, okay, if you're a hypothyroid patient and you're being treated with levothyroxine and you don't feel fully well, your doctor should provide you with the combination therapy as an experimental trial, uh, as a trial, right? You're going to receive that combination therapy the way it has, been, has to be done. This is the way it's done, by the way. The societies tell you how to do it. And then... Uh, good. I mean, maybe you're going to feel better. Maybe you're not going to feel better. But at least it, it's it, it's we changed their attitude because before we would say, don't do it. Just don't do it because it's worthless. No, it is not worthless. Wow. I can't tell you. No response to D3. I've had thyroidectomy and I can't tell you how many times I heard it from doctors. 
that it's worthless to incorporate T3, even though I feel not good at just on T4. Right. And we're talking about a major paradigm shift, really, of acceptance. And it's very validating for thyroidectomy patients, hypothyroidism patients. They just knew they weren't feeling good on T4 alone, yet they would go into the endocrinologist. The doctor would say, this is all you need, T4, because right. I'm actually your body's... So we're just is talking about a major shift. Yes, a major shift. And and it's interesting that uh, what, what supported that position from the past? What was there to support that? Well, if you look at the clinical trials, there are about 20 clinical trials that have been done in the last 20 years. And if you add all the patients, you get about 1,000 patients in all those clinical trials. And it is true that when you compare uh, what's the efficacy of levothyroxine versus the efficacy of levothyroxine plus T3, and by efficacy, I mean all those questions. How do you feel? Do you feel tired? Do you feel good? Uh, they do cognitive tests sometimes. They test your memory. So after all those tests, there is no statistical difference between both treatments. But let's pause and think a little bit about that. What does that mean? It means if you take a group of hypothyroid patients and treat them with levothyroxine, and then you switch them to levothyroxine plus T3, there's no difference. But we just started by saying most patients on, with hypothyroidism do feel well with levothyroxine. So if you have 100 patients, 80 feel well on levothyroxine, you switch those 100 patients to levothyroxine plus T3, those 80 that did well on levothyroxine, they're going to still feel well on levothyroxine plus T3. The difference is just for those 20 people that actually needed the T3. And, and of those 20, how many of those will feel better? We don't know. Uh, I can tell you about the recent studies that we had. But what I just wanted to complete the thought is that the, the effect of T3 on those 20 has been lost because it's all mixed up with all those patients that do feel well. So a major shift in, the shift in paradigm came along with the idea that from now on, we have to focus on those patients that are symptomatic, those patients that remain. Because we, you know, we don't want to help further the patients that do well on levothyroxine. We want to help the ones that don't feel well on levothyroxine. Now, just recently, I was lucky to be part of a study that was conducted at uh, Walter Reed Medical Center by Dr. Shakir and Hong, uh, and it was actually just published maybe two or three weeks ago, in, in which they did just that. They did a new clinical trial, uh, randomized, double-blinded, in which patients were treated with levothyroxine for four months and then switched to combination therapy and then switched to a uh, desiccated thyroid extract, but all in a random order. So it was all mixed up. No one knew who was where, right? It was all blinded, the doctors and the patients. And the conclusion was that, again, as a group, there's no difference. However, if you take those that don't feel well and live with thyroxine, which was about a third, those responded dramatically to either combination therapy or desiccated thyroid extract. And they prefer that as well. So I think that we are observing a major change in, in, in treatment of hypothyroidism with the recognition that those patients that don't feel well do, do most likely benefit from adding T3 to their therapy. Now, one thing I, I need to say uh, Ed, is th there's a group of patients that don't feel well even when you add T3. Okay, what, what, why the, what does that mean? Well, uh, there sometimes, and I see this more often, uh, patients are placed on, on are labeled with the the, the 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 label hypothyroidism, and in fact they don't have hypothyroidism. Mm -hmm. So they have symptoms which are vague. I'm tired. I'm gaining weight. Uh, I, my hair is falling. My skin is dry. So all those symptoms that really suggest hypothyroidism. However, uh, the doctor checks the thyroid function tests, like the TSH is normal, uh, or maybe slightly elevated. And with the symptoms and the slightly elevated TSH, 
okay, you have hypothyroidism, I'm going to start treating you. Hmm. And, and then everything else that goes wrong with that treatment, it's blamed on the levothyroxine didn't work. Well, perhaps that patient did not have hypothyroidism to start with. And I see more and more uh, doctors being very liberal with the giving levothyroxine. There's a study that, that uh, assessed this problem in the U.S. recently published, and they think that up to 20%, 30% of the patients that are on levothyroxine, in fact, don't have hypothyroidism. So that's the first category. For those patients, the symptoms were due to something else. And the- oh, and Bianca, what do they have? If they, okay, right. so the case, yeah, they have the symptoms. In my but experience, it's one. absolutely. In my experience, the number one confounding factor is menopausal syndrome. Mm-hmm. For women, all women go through menopause, and the, those symptoms of menopause, feeling tired, uh, problems with memory, cognition, uh, the skin changes, the hair changes. Yes, it could be hypothyroidism, but yes, it could be menopausal syndrome as well. Oh, they could have the, the vitamin B deficiency. They could have other autoimmune diseases that need parathyroid disease. Well, I mean, it, it, they can have a, a bunch of things that might feel you that, that you might not feel well, and mm-hmm. the TSH is slightly elevated, and the doctor stops at the TSH because it's the the most logical and the the, the easiest one to get, but in fact, there's no thyroid disease, and you're trying to treat those symptoms that were similar to hypothyroidism, but with thyroid hormone. But if you don't have hypothyroidism, that, that's a, I, myself, many patients. And I, I, I said, well, what is the evidence that you have hypothyroidism? So we need to look at that population of individuals that don't feel well on levothyroxine in a very smart way. Yes, a lot of them will benefit from T3. A lot of them have other causes that explain their mm-hmm. symptoms and needs to be investigated. And a lot of them don't even have hypothyroidism and are being treated. And we think thyroid hormone, thyroid hormone is not going to help them no matter what you do. Hmm. This is ground shaking because you said, I can't tell you how many times I have heard you're taking T4, that's all you need. And I would say, I just don't right. feel good. And then once I switch to desiccated T4, T3, in fact, I do feel improved. But meanwhile, the same doctors that said you don't need it, they stick to their guns and say all you need is levothyroxine. You just need T4. Right. Yeah. And I think that that came from, uh, you know, the shift from desiccated thyroid. thyroid. Desiccated thyroid extract has been used for almost 100 years, right? It started at around 1900, and then in 1970 stopped. Mm. And from 19, during 1970 and 1980, there was a shift from desiccated thyroid extract to levothyroxine. Thanks mm-hmm. to uh, science, the progress of science, we, we realized that T4 gets converted to T3. So doctors thought, well, then if, if the body converts T4 to T3, then we actually mm-hmm. don't need to give T3 because the body is smarter than we are and will produce the sufficient amount of T3. Well, guess what? That's not true. It does not. So that's the other change that has happened that underlies all these changes in the medical societies. It Mm -hmm. is realized that if you are treated with levothyroxine and you have hypothyroidism, your T3 will always be relatively low and your T4 is always going to be relatively high. So you have a higher T4 and lower T3 through, through life. And and I don't understand why. That was discovered in 1974 by a famous thyroid doctor, Dr. Jack Oppenheimer. Mm. And I, at that point, looking back in history, I think flags should have been raised. So wait, wait a minute, we are giving levothyroxine only and T3 is subnormal. How is that possible? How, of course, this patient is not going to feel well. If the T3, what's T3? T3 is the hormone that actually does something, is the biologically active hormone. T4 doesn't do much. T3 is the one that can resolve symptoms of hypothyroidism. Mm-hmm. So if T3 is low, what do you expect is going to happen? Right. But somehow people ignore that. And I can't understand that, why people ignore it, but they did. And 
and you know what? Let's not even measure T3. And I learned this. T3, measuring T3 in hypothyroidism is useless. Don't even go there because it's all you have to measure is T4 and TSH. Well, that brought us where we are today. Patients are watching this or they might be listening to it. It's, it's a podcast on iTunes. But whether they're watching or listening, some are feeling real validation. And they've been told over and over and over after they say, doctor, I feel crummy. Can I try T3? Doctor says, no, we're not going to give you T3. That's also, right. you just T4. What should those patients do? If they have an endocrinologist that is not willing to, to treat them with T3 along with T4? Well, I think the patient uh, need to talk to their doctor, number one. Uh, a, a very important part of this treatment is the doctor-patient relationship. And we, we re recently did a, a survey about symptoms of hypothyroidism and looking at brain fog, because that's one of the things that they complain a lot. And a, compo a subcomponent of brain fog is the, the fact that the patients are extremely frustrated with their doctors that don't mm -hmm. listen to them. And uh, it's interesting. We didn't publish this study yet. It's, it's under review. It's going to be published. But it's fascinating that this becomes an aggravating factor for the mm -hmm. whole thing that they, they feel. Now, so I strongly suggest the patients to talk to their doctor, explain how they feel, direct their doctors to guests like yours, direct their doctors to recent publications from the American Thyroid Association, European Thyroid Association, British Thyroid Association. And after all this, if the doctor still does not want to try something, that patient unfortunately needs to look for another endocrinologist that will have a, a more open-minded uh, towards treatment of hypothyroidism. Dr. Bianco, thank you for saying these words because really there's patients listening right now saying, oh my God, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. And to, to hear this from you, uh, it's going to really, it, it might really improve their life because now they have a door open to get that T3 or at least try it. Maybe it's not going to work. Now, can we say, can we batch together hypothyroidism patients and patients that have thyroidectomy? In regard to in regard to taking thyroid hormone, and some that are only on T4, can T3 work for both of those groups? Oh yes, absolutely. I mean, we looked for differences between Hashimoto's thyroiditis, is that what you mean, and surgical thyroidectomy. Uh, there, there's not a great deal of these differences. In this last survey that we did, uh, which involved almost six thousand individuals that had hypothyroidism mm -hmm. and brain fog. So 6,000 individuals told us how they felt. And obviously we tried to match. Well, we asked that specific question that said, is there a difference in those patients that had surgery that, that had radioactive iodine or they had uh, Hashimoto's? Type? No, we could not find major, they're, they're very small differences. In general, you could just mm -hmm. say they have hypothyroidism. Mm -hmm. Well, Dr. Bianco, we're going to shift this to uh, all these resources we listed in the uh, episode notes. We're going to shift this to kind of a rapid fire uh, interview where I name a hot topic that you read about from so many patients when they're in these uh, thyroid support groups on Facebook mm -hmm. or what sure. have you. And we're going to go to this rapid fire. But what I do see is there's a lot of comments coming in right now from across the world, including Latin America and the U.S. So what we can tell you to those joining us, thank you for being here, number one. But two, we see your questions. We're gonna pop some of those up on the screen. And if we don't have time to address these live, Dr. Bianco is willing to uh, check your comments after the interview and respond to your comments in Spanish or English uh, immediately following. So rapid fire, Dr. Bianco, desiccated thyroid. Uh it's uh, we see more and more a uh, large number of people on desiccated thyroid extract. I think uh, the patient and the doctor needs to find a reliable source uh, that is steady, that provides the normal amounts and it doesn't change over time. And uh, desiccated thyroid extract contains a little bit more T3 than the regular combination therapy. So uh, we should be on the lookout for 
avoiding that for older patients. And uh, uh, but other than that, uh, I think that as long as the TSH is normal, the thyroid extract is fine. What time of day and how should someone take thyroid replacement hormone? Uh, the major issue with thyroid hormone replacement is having an empty stomach because the absorption of levothyroxine or T4 is impaired by food and by different components of the food. So it, it should be fasting, at, at least several hours fasting. So we recommend early in the morning, before breakfast, before anything, just take that pill. Now, it could be at night as well, uh, uh, as long as several hours have elapsed after the, the last meal. After, If you have dinner at 5 or 6 p.m. and you want to take your pill at midnight, that's fine as well with water. Somebody had a thyroidectomy or they have hypothyroidism. What lab work should they have done and how often? Well, we normally measure TSH, T4, and T3 uh, in, in order to follow up the treatment, right? So you adjust treat hormone replacement therapy, you adjust based on the TSH. And I think that that hasn't changed. Uh, what changes how you do treatment, but, but you always need to keep the TSH within the normal range. A patient as an endocrinologist that absolutely refuses a patient to try desiccated thyroid. Why and after why, then what do we tell the patient to do? Well, I mean, why? Because <clears throat> uh, everyone has been told doctors that desiccated thyroid extract is dangerous because it contains a lot of T3 and, uh, uh, and also have been told that it's inconsistent because the, the contents of T4 and T3 can vary from batch to batch. Yes, I think that can happen with, with a lot of drugs. The problem is the desiccated thyroid extract is not fully approved by the FDA. So there's not a lot of control over that. So that's why I said you need to find a reliable company, a reliable source of desiccated thyroid extract, and, <clears throat> and you put to rest that idea that is inconsistent or it's not. I, mean, I think that the, if the doctor will help you choose that. But also because we told doctors that it was dangerous because it contained a lot of D3. Yeah, if you have a, if you just had a heart attack and I'm giving you a super extra amount of DTE, it's not good. I mean, you have to, to, to be conscious about that as well. A patient feels super crummy and not for all patients, but some when they incorporate T3 into their treatment, what symptoms seem to improve dramatically? I think uh, what I see right after I added T3 to, to a few patients, they come back and, you know, a few days later, they just write an email saying, thank you very much. You, you saved me my life. I can have a, a clarity in my thoughts right now. I feel more motivated. So I think that the things that resolved are I don't feel as thyroid as I used to feel. And my my the, a cloud has been lifted from my mind that's what i have heard from these patients but uh, uh, we have to say that a similar number of other individuals say that it didn't help them much mm. well dr bianco this is exciting thank you and looking forward to your latest research however we got a we got really a treat here to hear about it first and for the the audience listening watching this is fantastic news. I mean, can they take this video and show their endocrinologist and say, no, look, I told you so. Can I try T3? Can I try desiccate? Yeah, I'm, uh, absolutely. Yes, I think I think that uh, if, uh, I, uh, there's a bunch of new stuff coming up that supports what I'm saying. So I, I suggest both patients and the endocrinologists look at PubMed look at the papers that have been published, look at the statements from the American Thyroid Association, the European Thyroid Association, and the British Thyroid Association, and uh, that will substantiate what I'm saying. Great. Well, Dr. Bianco, thank you so much. It's great to have you here. Any final words before we say farewell? Well, I mean, I think that it has been 50 years of, uh, uh, of uh, changes in the treatment of hypothyroidism. Uh, 
these 15 years were extremely interesting because we saw a, a shift from this thyroid extract to levothyroxine only. And we saw flags, uh, you know, things mm -hmm. happening and we didn't pay attention to them. And thanks to the patients that pushed and pushed and pushed, this change is happening. Uh, it, 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 and uh, unfortunately, because from a medical point of view, everything was fine. Uh, the doctors did not start this revolution, if we can call it that way. Who started this revolution was the, were the patients. And the patients pushed. And people like me, and, and there's a lot of people like me, heard what the patients were saying and started thinking, are we doing the right thing? And to those doctors is that we are seeing this shift back now to the idea that we yeah patients do need to feel well and they were some of them mm -hmm. were not feeling well only with our rocks this is revolutionary in a certain degree and i wonder because the patients were being listened to it sounds like the patient's voice voices got louder and i wonder how much social media had to do with this oh i, I think a lot I, I do think so the first time that patients got together and started to, to move this forward was in 1996, when a, a patients wrote letters to the British Thyroid Foundation. They wrote letters to a psychologist and they explained to her that they weren't feeling well. And they were actually happy to see that other patients were not feeling well as well because they thought they were nuts. And the fact that others that had hypothyroidism and also didn't feel well made them feel uh, stronger. So in 1996, they wrote letters complaining. They, so this journey has been almost 25 years in the making. And, uh, and, and afterwards, obviously, with social media, you know, I go on those uh, uh, patient groups as well as you, you go. And if I want to see what they're saying. I want to be part of that. And I, I see the same things that you see and the patients complain. Well, kudos to you for, for listening to patients that way. And one final thing, and that is sourcing T3 or desiccated. And I'll tell you by personal experience, when I was in Argentina, I had to cross the border to Uruguay to get T3. And when I was recently in Taiwan, there was no desiccated, there was no T3. Here, uh, whether you're in Thailand, many parts of the world, no desiccated, no T3. Correct. What can a patient do if their country does not have T3 or desiccated available? Uh, well, they have to look for alternative sources, obviously. Sometimes what happens is that the T3 is available, but it's not like in England. In England, for example, the, uh, the health system does not pay for T3 because they don't recognize the value of T3. So if you and your doctor agree that T3 is to be used for you, you have to pay out of pocket. So, uh, so sometimes the drug is available, but the national health system doesn't pay for that drug. And some countries like Brazil don't have T3 at all. So, uh, but in Brazil, there are uh, companies that bring T3 from different countries that will make it available for patients, obviously at a price. So it's not gonna be uh, like the regular price that you would normally pay. So there are alternative sources, but you know, it's interesting to see that T3 was so, it fell from use so much that multiple countries dropped it from their list. So the manufacturer, they were just not selling because no one was prescribing. And now there's a major shift to bring back T3 to the market again. I just heard that T3 is going to be uh, sometime in the next couple of years be brought back to market in Brazil, for example. And I'm sure those pharmaceutical companies, I think, of other countries as well. If you were to put this news on a billboard, all that we're talking about, about these revelations, about this revolution, yeah. what would that billboard say? Well... I think it should say, we hear you, we believe you. We know that levothyroxine, it's a great medicine, resolves the problem of most hypothyroid patients, but we now believe that there's a group of patients that don't fully benefit from levothyroxine alone. And for those patients, we need to combine uh, T3 with levothyroxine as well. 
Thank you, Dr. Bianco. You're welcome. Have a great day.